the order of a meeting of Danville City Council. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Reverend Campbell. Here. Mr. Gilstrap. Here. Mr. Jones. Here. Vice Mayor Luther. Here. Dr. Miller. Mr. Rowley. Here. Mayor Saunders. Here. Mr. Shanks. Here. Mr. Toma. Here. Please stand for the invocation. Remain standing for the pledge given tonight by Councilman Raleigh. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for another day and your gift of life. Uh, Father, these are some trying times for many, many people in our community and our nation. Uh, we just pray for your guidance, your wisdom, your courage and decision making. Uh, be with us tonight as we go about uh, the business of the city of Danville. Uh, put your head of protection, Father, around the men and women uh, of our military around the world. Guide and direct us in all that we say and do. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much, Mr. Raleigh. I'd like to ask Ms. Ann Vanderbilt, Ms. Ann Vander Van Liet Stratton, sorry, to please come forward. Ann Vanderbilt, still popular, okay? Mayor Saunders, it's my pleasure to introduce our board chairman, Dr. Tiffany Franks. Welcome, Dr. Franks. I am honored to present a proclamation, and this proclamation is for the smart beginning. <clears throat> Whereas an average one in four children in Danville will enter kindergarten without the basic skills needed to succeed in school. And whereas early childhood represents a once in a lifetime opportunity to positively impact our children and our communities and the first five years of life create the physical, cognitive, social, and emotional foundation for school readiness. And whereas children we have a variety of quality early childhood experiences with parents, caregivers, and teachers begin school healthy and ready to learn and are able to grow into engaged, educated citizens. And whereas studies confirm that every $1 invested in early childhood, in early childhood education can yield returns as high as $16 through higher academic achievement and lower rates of grade retention remedial services, school failure, criminal behavior, and welfare dependence. Now, therefore, I, Sherman Saunders, Mayor, do hereby proclaim March 2012 as School Readiness Month and encourage all parents to make it a priority to have their child prepared into kindergarten ready to succeed in school and in life. Given under my hand the sixth day of March 2012 Chairman M. Saunders, Mayor. Congratulations. Yeah. Would you like to have a few words? Okay. Thank you. I get a shirt. Okay, thank you. Well, let me come down for that, okay? Let me come down for that. Saunders and members of City Council, thank you so much for your support. I'm, I'm really here tonight on behalf of Smart Beginnings Danville, Pennsylvania, and I'm here because we're working to make a difference in the lives of our community's children. And as you said, Mayor Saunders, this is ultimately the future of our community. So many people do not realize that literally, on average, one in four children in Danville will in enter kindergarten without the basic skills that they need to succeed in school. 
And we know that children who enter kindergarten behind are far more likely to stay behind throughout all of their years in school. And what a detriment this is to our community's children, and then what a detriment it is to our community. Every investment we make in our children is an investment in our community. Now this may surprise you because it did me that some states even use kindergarten assessments to predict dropout rates and to predict the number of prison beds that will be needed in the future. That was staggering to me. So what does this mean for our community? It's simple, but it isn't easy. It means we have to strengthen the system of services and resources for the children throughout our community so that they have a smart beginning, a stronger beginning. And that's exactly what Smart Beginnings is working to do. We're working closely with families, with schools, with health care and child care providers. Literally every organization in our community that serves children from age birth to five. And here's what we're working to do. First, to improve the quality of child care in our community, and we're doing this by providing professional mentoring to preschool programs, and ultimately, and I think this is so important, by rating child care centers so that working parents can make much more informed decisions about where their children are placed in, in child care. Second, we're working to strengthen support to families by increasing their access to evidence-based parent education. Third, we're working to raise awareness about the importance of early learning and nurturing for children before kindergarten. Eighty-five percent of a child of a child's critical thinking skills are developed by age five. Again, pretty staggering when you think about it. Fourth, we're working to increase collaboration between all of the agencies to improve outcomes for our children. And Smart Beginnings is working to encourage elementary schools to begin the relationship with families and school months before that child starts kindergarten. And that first step um, in building this early relationship is early registration. The proclamation that you've just read tonight by declaring March as School Readiness Month is the first step in helping raise awareness for our children. Thank you so much for your support. And, we're just excited about what we're doing and we're making progress and we'll stay hard at it. I always say these, these by investing in our, the youngest of these, these are our future Averett students, these are our future Danville Community College students, these are our future students throughout the, the state. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Franks, and also thank you, Ms. Pratton, and all associated with the Smart Beginnings Program. I think it's unfortunate that a person profiled as written at birth, at say through age five, based on your zip code, your name, or where you live. That's unfortunate. But you all are working to prove them wrong. And thank you for all that you do. And you certainly have our support. Thank you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> I would like to ask the Girl Scouts if you would come down, please. Another proclamation. I will read it. Whereas March 12, 2012, marks the 100th anniversary of Girl Scouts of the USA, founded by Juliet Gordon Lowe in 1912 in Savannah, Georgia, where Vice Mayor Luther lived in 1912. <laughs> He's in Danville now. Whereas 100 years of Girl Scouting has helped build millions of girls and women of courage, confidence, and character who act to make the world a better place. And whereas the award-winning Girl Scout Leadership Program helps girls discover themselves and their values, connect with others, and take action to make the world a better place. And whereas the Girl Scout Gold Award, the highest honor in Girl Scouting, requires girls to make a measurable and sustainable difference in their community, assess a need and design a solution, find the resources and support to make it happen, complete the project, and also inspire others to sustain it. And whereas more than three million current Girl Scout members nationwide will be celebrating 100 years 
of this American tradition with nearly 50 million women who are former Girl Scouts and living proof of the impact of this amazing movement. Now, therefore, I, Sherman and Saunders, Mayor of the City of Andrew, do hereby proudly proclaim the week of March 12, 2012, as Girl Scout Week, and applaud the Girl Scouts of the USA for their 100 years of leadership development of America's girls, given under my hand the 6th day of March, 2012, Sherman M. Saunders, Mayor. Thank you. Just for smiling. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Would you like to have some remarks, anyone? We are, we are Girl Scouts Troop 152, and we are happy to be here this evening to celebrate the 100th anniversary of Girl Scouting with you. Juliet Daisy Gordon Lowe assembled 18 girls from Savannah, Georgia, on March 12, 1912, for a local Girl Scout meeting. She believed that all girls should be given the opportunity to develop physically, mentally, and spiritually. With the goal of bringing girls out of isolated home environments and into community service in open air, Girl Scouts hiked, played basketball, went on camping trips, learned how to tell time by stars, and studied first aid. Today, Girl Scouts are, is still growing strong with a membership of over 3.2 million girls and more than 50 million American women that have enjoyed Girl Scouting during their childhood. We are proud of how far Girl Scouts has come, but it's time to take a bold step and rally the nation around the cause of girls' leadership. Thank you. Research shows that something's going on with girls today. They're backing down and shying away from leading. They're bullied by their peers, pressured by industries that celebrate, <coughs> that celebrate unrealistic beauty and are backing away from science and math. Only one in five girls believe she has what it takes to lead. 59% of girls say fashion industry makes them feel fat. 85% of middle school students say they've been cyberbullied at least once. And although that more than 90% of girls in fourth grade want to continue studying math, by 12th grade that number drops by 50%. It has been said that women's status in society is a direct measure of that society's success. The statistics we read about girls today have a particular a predicting effect on all of our futures. Thank you. So what is oh Lord. <laughs> <laughs> so what is happening? I understand. <laughs> so what is happening? What is so discouraging for girls today? Girls are lacking role models and mentors, especially in the science, technology, and math fields. Girls are confronted by unhealthy images about female beauty and the bullying mentally of peers holds girls back. An unsupportive environment gives girls discouraging messages starting in grade school and beyond. If this situation goes unchecked, millions of girls will, ne will never realize their full leadership potential. They'll opt out of pursuing their ambitions and never dare to believe them in themselves. As we celebrate 100 years of Girl Scouts, we want to make sure that every girl has the opportunity to reach her fullest leadership potential. We, the Girl Scouts of the USA, are ready to take on such a bold and ambitious goal, but we need your help to raise awareness and expectations and to make the world a better place for this generation of girls. Please check out more at togetherthere.org. When, when girls succeed, so does society. And now we have some delicious Girl Scout cookies for you. All right. All right. Thank you. <laughs> And while you're bringing those to us, and thank you for doing that, I want to make one correction. Uh, Vice Mayor Luther was not born in Savannah, Georgia in uh, 1912. That would make him 100 years old. <laughs> He's only 99, okay? <laughs> I was born in Virginia, too. So. <laughs> oh, and in Virginia. <laughs> thank you. Thank you all so much.
and congratulations. Those who wish to speak on any item that's not listed on the agenda will be heard at this time. If you wish to speak on any item listed on the agenda, you will be heard when that item is considered. Anyone wish to speak? Anyone wish to speak? Thank you. Current approval of minutes of the regular council meeting held on February 7, 2012. Is there a motion? Uh, Mr. Raleigh, is there a second? Mr. Jones, discussion on the motion. Madam Clerk? Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mr. Gilstrap? Aye. Mr. Jones? Aye. Vice Mayor Luther? Aye. Dr. Miller? Mr. Raleigh? Aye. Mayor Saunders? Aye. Mr. Shanks? Aye. Mr. Tomer? Aye. Final budget amendment item A through C have been previously discussed by City Council, introduced the first reading. There will be no separate discussion on these items, and they will be enacted by one motion. If discussion desired by a council member or a citizen, the item will be removed from the consent process and considered separately. Is there a motion for items A, B, C? Anyone wish to pull anything at all? Is there a motion? Uh, Mr. Tomer. No, I do not wish to pull anything. I'll make a motion for all of them when you're ready, Mayor. No second? Uh, Mr. Shanks, discussion on the motion? Madam Clerk. Mr. Gilstrap? Aye. Mr. Jones? Aye. Vice Mayor Luther? Aye. Dr. Miller? Mr. Raleigh? Aye. Mayor Saunders? Aye. Mr. Shanks? Aye. Mr. Tomer? Aye. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Appointment, Mr. Vice Mayor. May I, I'd like to make this as one uh, resolution, please. Resolution appointing uh, Bernard Baker as a member of the Danville Development Authority. Resolution appointing Donna Benz as a member of the Danville Development Authority. Resolution appointing James Bolton as a member of the Danville Development Authority. Resolution appointing Amanda Glenn as a member of the Danville Development Authority. Resolution appointing Catherine Lassiter as a member of the Danville Development Authority. Resolution appointing James Motley as a member of the Danville Development Authority. And a resolution appointing Bryce Simmons as a member of the Danville Development Authority. There a second? Mr. Campbell, discussion on the motion. Madam Clerk? Mr. Jones? Aye. Vice Mayor Luther? Aye. Dr. Miller? Mr. Raleigh? Aye. Mayor Saunders? Aye. Mr. Shanks? Aye. Mr. Tomer? Aye. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mr. Gilstrap? Aye. To the consideration of amend of authorizing and approving an option agreement and an actual sale of the city's parking lot on Lynn Street, parcel number 23104, to Rehab Development Incorporated for $5,250. I open the public hearing. Anyone wish to speak? Anyone wish to speak? I close the public hearing. Mr. Shanks. Yes, Mayor, I move for adoption of a resolution authorizing and approving an option agreement and actual sale of the city's parking lot on Lynn Street, parcel number 23104. Okay, second, Mr. Vice Mayor. Discussion on the motion. Uh, Mr. James. Uh, yes, Mayor, I just wanted to point out that, uh, for the citizens that this is a sale of a uh, piece of property that the city acquired and is selling at the same price that it purchased the property. Okay. Thank you. Further discussion? Madam Clerk? Vice Mayor Luther? Aye. Dr. Miller? Mr. Rawling? Aye. Mayor Saunders? Aye. Mr. Shanks? Aye. Mr. Toma? Aye. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mr. Gilstrap? Aye. Mr. Jones? Aye. Director approving revision to the Enterprise Zone Amendment application and to amend resolution number 2011-11.06, resolution number 2011-11.07 to authorize the manager to submit the application to the Virginia Department of Housing and Community Development for amendments to City Enterprise Zone boundaries and incentives. There a motion? Mr. Campbell. Yes, may I move for an adoption of resolution amending resolution 2011-11.06 authorizing the city manager to submit the Virginia Department of Housing and Community Development Enterprise Zone boundary and incentive amendment application for the City Urban Enterprise Zone 1. Number two, resolution amending. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Campbell. I think we need to do that separately. Separate. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Separate. Campbell. Okay, the second. Uh, Mr. Gilstrap, discussion of the motion. Madam Clerk. Dr. Miller, 
Mr. Rowling? Aye. Mayor Saunders? Aye. Mr. Shanks? Aye. Mr. Tomer? Aye. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mr. Gilstrap? Aye. Mr. Jones? Aye. Vice Mayor Luther? Aye. Mr. Campbell, number two, sir. Resolution, amendment of resolution 2011-11.07 authorized the city manager submit to the Virginia Department of Housing and Community <coughs> Development an enterprise zone incentive amendment application for the city's portion of the joint zone four with Pennsylvania County Enterprise Zone number 15, 57. Second, Mr. Vice Mayor. Discussion on the motion. Madam Clerk. Mr. Rawling. Aye. Mayor Saunders. Aye. Mr. Shanks. Aye. Mr. Toma. Aye. Reverend Campbell. Aye. Mr. Gilstrap. Aye. Mr. Jones. Aye. Vice Mayor Luther. Aye. Dr. Miller. Federation of amending FY2012 budget appropriation ordinance to provide for a transfer general fund balance in the amount for $450,000 for a repayment of a grant from Virginia Department of Rail and Public Transportation for construction of a rail spur to serve the Swedewood facility. Is there a motion? Mr. Shanks. Yes, Mayor. I move for uh, approval of an ordinance of amending the fiscal year 2012 budget appropriation ordinance to provide for a transfer from the general fund balance in the amount of $450,000 for repayment of a grant from the Commonwealth of Virginia Department of Rail and Public Transportation for construction of a rail spur to serve the Swedewood facility in appropriating the same first reading. And second, Mr. Raleigh. Discussion on the motion? Uh, Mr. Vice Mayor. I would like to say that um, there's been a lot of discussion about this. Mainly it comes in a simple form like, who's to blame for this or what happened here? So we have a public hearing on this scheduled for March the 20th at our next meeting, and I hope that the administration and others who have knowledge will tell us what happened on this. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. James. Yes, <clears throat> uh, Mayor, I, I too uh, share the concerns of the citizens and as expressed by Mr. Uh, Luther as, uh, as included in the ordinance or in the memo from the manager, I would, uh, I know there's some further discussion to take place, but it's important, I think, for the citizens to realize that this uh, particular incentive package was uh, put forth by the previous administration, a previous uh, city manager and his uh, previous administration and also prior to the current economic development staff being in place. And I think it's important that citizens realize that, uh, that these type of agreements aren't being uh, made up during this administration and during the uh, work of our economic development staff. Thank you. Further discussion? First reading. Consideration of amending FY 25 by the ordinance to provide for a grant in the amount of $12,145 from the Department of Criminal Justice Services, the W.W. Moore Juvenile Detention Center. Mr. Jones. Mr. Mayor, we would adopt an ordinance amending the fiscal year 2012 budget appropriation ordinance by anticipating revenues in the amount of $12,245 in federal funds from the Department of Criminal Justice Services with a local match of $1,361 to purchase hardware, software, and furnishings to implement an in-house records management system and to provide after-hours intake and a telemedicine program for referred juveniles and appropriating the same. Thank you. The second? Uh, Mr. Mr. Gilstrap. Discussion on the motion. Discussion on the motion. First reading. Communication. Mr. Manager. Uh, nothing to report. Okay. Mr. Turney. I would like to thank the Girl Scouts for my cookies. <laughs> okay. Madam Clerk. Nothing. Sir. All right. Please call the roll. Mr. Shanks. Yes, I, I'd like to say thank you to Smart Beginnings for, the, for their work and for their presentation tonight. And also uh, thank you for the Girl Scouts and congratulations on the 100 years of uh, scouting. That's all, Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Tomer? Yes, uh, we, we have numerous visitors come before us and, and talk about things. But when the Girl Scouts come, I always get excited because there's <laughs> cookies and good things to be said. And I appreciate your time and uh, coming here. And, 100 years is a great thing. Congratulations to you. Thank you for the cookies. And Smart Beginnings, a wonderful, wonderful thing, early childhood development and education. Uh, it's so true. The statistics are there, and, and the proof is there, and it's something we all need to support, and the community needs to get behind. 
Uh, while we're talking about the community, I, I want to congratulate all the members that turned in their paperwork. I know getting those petitions signed and tracking down and tapping a hundred and some people on the shoulder and getting them to sign a petition and they look at you and like, what am I signing this for? It's not easy. So I want to congratulate the, I believe there's eight people that filed. Uh, campaigning is, is not easy either. And just putting your name in there is something you should be proud to do and offering yourself to serve the community. Uh, looking forward to being on the sidelines this upcoming election and, and listening to the issues and I'm just glad that people came forward, and I'm glad that all the members on council now have, have stepped up and, and offered themselves yet again, and, and I thank them for their service. Uh, that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Reverend Campbell. Yes, just a few comments. Um, I said we had an opportunity to fill in for the mayor and the vice mayor for the Dan River Basin Association. It was very interesting that uh, 10 years ago they started the initiative and it started here in Danville and that this association reached into 13, 16 counties and talking with some of the members of this initiative, they were very impressed with the upgrades of the river district and where Danville is moving forward and they were very excited and they're looking forward to coming back to the city again. Lastly, on last Thursday, there was a forum at the Omega Church, Afro Omega Church with Reverend George Breeder, Reverend George, and uh, it was very informative, a lot of questions that was asked. I was glad to see the citizens engaging into this process. Many of the questions that was asked was dealing with the school system, and of course we all know that there's, this is a serious budget issue, and I'm just hoping that we can work together as much as possible to save uh, school closings. I do know that we had a light winter in reference to uh, weather and snow, and maybe there's some things that we can move around to say at least I know one school may close and possibly two, that we can do what we can to prevent uh, this tremendous school closing from closing. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Gilstrap. Uh, <clears throat> A couple of items. First, congratulations, Girl Scouts. Uh, it's marvelous that you have, uh, uh, what you do in our city with the Girl, or our community with the Girl Scouts, and thank you for the cookies. And I know some of you very well, so hey. <laughs> um, and uh, Smart Beginnings, I just want you to know that I appreciate you, and uh, I am ready to help you get the kids ready. So, um, it's, it's great what you're doing. Also had the opportunity to attend a concert last Thursday for the honor orchestras from Gibson, Bonner, and Westwood. And I'll tell you, the middle school, they were excellent. And uh, also, uh, Thank you to the candidates running for uh, council. Appreciate you giving of your time and energy and desire to help us make this city better. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Jones. Mr. Mayor, it's uh, <clears throat> just great to see the, what's happening tonight, smart beginnings and the wonderful things that you are doing, and these young people from Girl Scouts. And I think everybody knows this does my heart glad. As Dr. Frank stated, every investment in our children is an investment in our community. Several of us had the opportunity to be at W. Townsley on last week for Dr. Seuss's birthday. And many of us had the opportunity to read to the young people. I just personally want to thank Ms. Cox, Ms. Green, Ms. Richardson, all the faculty and staff. I had a great time. And as Dr. Frank stated, I can't say it over the investment in our young people. Also, I had an opportunity to be with Ms. Davis and the staff and faculty at W.W. W. Moore and the wonderful things and programs that they have for the young people at W.W. W. Moore, um, the different things they're teaching the young people so when they come back into our community, they'll be ready. This weekend, we were at uh, Pleasant View speaking and talking with our young people. So everyone, as Dr. has been stated, everybody working together to really get our young people to where they need to be. And to the Girl Scouts, thank you so much for the cookies. I would, please do not tell Dr. Miller I switched with him. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Thank you. Vice Mayor Luther. I, I just want to say how amazed I am at the uh, mayor remembering that he was with me when the Girl Scouts started. <laughs> 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 and, 
and thank you for my favorite uh, cookies. And as far as getting young people started as early as they can in, in any sort of educational program, I, I, I think is fantastic. And that includes the scouts as, as well as Dr. Franks. Um, uh, it, when did uh, ABC, I mean uh, GSO, it was the day before yesterday, had their ribbon cutting. It was amazing to hear this story. That was probably the most uh, emotional ribbon cutting I've ever attended in my life. When this young man who escaped with his family from Cuba, communist Cuba, when he was three or four and his uh, parents managed to get out of that communist country, came to America, made it, uh, uh, they didn't come in, um, you know, as anything but legal citizens. They worked very hard. They appreciated America so much. Uh, the young man that uh, opened uh, the company that just located here uh, thought so much of this country. He wanted to repay uh, America for what uh, this country had done for his family. And uh, I tell you, it, it, it was a very emotional and, and uh, moving. Uh, experience to hear how sincerely great they, uh, they thought America was. But more importantly, they put Danville, Virginia, up ahead of any place that they had been and they had looked at as the place to locate. <laughs> they thought Danville was the most friendly, the most opportunistic for them, and I just hope and pray that they do great, especially after the wonderful things they said about our city. And I, I sat there thinking, I just hope they're more like this to come, but, but uh, we all felt proud. Thank you. Yes, sir. GSO Aviation, Ray Rodriguez, and thank you for that. Yes. <clears throat> Dr. Miller? Mr. Raleigh? Yes, I'd just like to thank Dr. Franks for coming and talking to us about Smart Beginnings, uh, a program that's going to help so many youth in our uh, region. Uh, I've also switched with Dr. Miller and got my peanut butter. Thank you all so very much, <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Miller. Uh, we'll, we'll make sure he gets some love. But thank you all so much for coming in and all you do. Uh, Denise, it's so glad to see you, and I'm glad you're feeling better. Uh, and uh, I would also like uh, to thank uh, Ms. Cox and her staff uh, at W. Towns Lee. Uh, the children that I had the privilege to read to uh, touched me. Uh, uh, really, really wonderful young children and uh, what a great day that was thank you mr mayor thank you mayor saunders i'm glad that mr jones and mr raleigh used the word switched and not pilfered uh, <laughs> those cookies <laughs> good choice of words young men i want to thank also dr franks and to the smart beginnings group the girl scout every year you guys do a great job love your comments love your cookies as well uh, I, too, want to congratulate GSO uh, Aviation for coming to Danville, starting with 15 jobs. I enjoyed being in W. Towns Lee reading. I had the book on the fox in the socks. And I'm also proud to say that 22 years ago, 22 years ago, my nephew won the reading contest at W. Towns Lee, 127 books in one week. Yeah, I'm proud of him. And uh, also, I want to... Uh, echo that that's being said about our city we do have some tough times but we are moving through this I think methodically we're trying to make the best decision that we can we're still getting input and regardless of what things may look like now or how we may feel things can and they could be worse so as best we can let's accept the facts let's be positive and let's work to them that's been all that's been all of our work all of our time and energy trying to find a way to fix things as opposed, as opposed to talking about how bad things are. Let's just rekindle, rechannel all that energy into trying to find a way to help our city continue to grow. And we are growing. Thank you very much. Being adjourned. <clears throat>